So I'm working on simple harmonic motion, uh, damped oscillations, and all that stuff. And I think it's an important point to go and look at phase space. So let's look at phase space. What's phase space and why would we use it for simple harmonic motion? So here's the mass on the spring. I made that. Hope you like it. Okay. So here we are. Let me put my thing. Uh, so let's say that we have this mass. The dotted line is the origin the, in the one dimension. So it's one dimensional motion. Uh, so that would be my x value, uh, the location of the mass. And since it's stretched past the equilibrium position, then there would be a backwards pushing force. I'm going to write that as fx. And so these are all scalars. I'm in one dimension, negative kx, where k is the spring constant. Using Newton's second law, we can write this. And I have a video on this. Okay, so if you want to look at this in more detail, down below there's a video. So the net force is negative kx, and that's mass times acceleration. Yes, we write uh, the second derivative of x with respect to time as x double dot because it looks cool, and it takes a lot less space. So I have negative kx equals mx double dot, uh, and then if I just solve that for x double dot, I get this differential equation. Now we can solve this. It's not too terribly difficult. It's actually pretty fairly easy. Uh, I'm going to let omega squared equal k over m, and if that's the case, I get this solution. So this says x is the function of t, depend, it's cosine omega t, sine omega t, with initial conditions, uh, x0 for cosine, v0 over omega for the sine, so you can start it wherever you want. Uh, you could also write it as this, and I have a video on how to write these three things down below. It's actually, I have a playlist for all this stuff, so you can just look at the playlist. So x is, I could write this as cosine omega t plus some fascia phi, uh, that works too. In that case, A is not the starting position, necessarily, just warning, okay. And finally, I could write that as a sum of uh, exponentials with the uh, imaginary exponents. Uh, that's hard to plot because we can't write, it's hard to plot um, those. It'd be better to switch back over to sines and cosines plot, but those are really nice to work with. Okay, so let's suppose that I have this oscillator uh, and I'm gonna show you this graph of the position versus time animated in Python. Not too hard to do. Um, just make sure you put, when you make your graph, put dot equals true. If you want to know how to do that, I have a graphing tutorial somewhere too. Uh, I could also plot the velocity versus time. Nice. Okay. But you know, they're not the same, right? Uh, okay. The, the problem with this graph is that it goes on forever. And so if I want to study the motion of this in a more holistic way, I need the graph to go on forever and I don't want to do that. So let's not plot time. So instead we're going to make a phase space. So a phase space is a plot of position on the horizontal axis and velocity on the vertical axis. And it does sound really cool. Warning, um, some people plot momentum versus position and that's fine too. Some people plot generalized momentum versus generalized position, but again, this is velocity, position versus velocity is going to be fine right here. So there's my dot in phase space, that blue dot, and that's where it's going to start. So it has some initial coordinate of x0, v0, which is x dot 0. x dot is the first derivative of position with respect to time, so it's velocity. So what does this dot mean? What if I think about what's going on right there? Well, in this coordinate, x is positive. So if I have a force in there, that means that the that the force on it's going to be in the negative x direction. And what do forces do? They change the velocity. Okay, so I know my velocity is going to be getting more negative right there. But that, and I also know the velocity is positive. So what does the velocity tell me? The velocity tells me that uh, the change in position. So this tells me, this data point right here tells me that in just a second, it's going to move uh, to a lower velocity because there's a positive position. So the, the, the vertical coordinate is going to get smaller and the horizontal coordinate is going to get bigger because there's a positive velocity. So it should be going this direction. Okay, let's just go ahead and animate this. It's not too difficult to animate in Python uh, and it does look pretty cool. So here's my, uh, oh, it didn't click. So here's my initial position and you get this lovely path. Now, warning, um, it, if you want it to be a circle, it could be a circle. The, the vertical scale has different axes than a horizontal axis scale. So, you know, that, that's pretty, it's fine the way it is. But I just want you to know, don't think that, oh, it, it is or is not a circle. Those depend on the units. Uh, so there you go. Let's look at some other important properties of a phase space diagram. 
So here's, um, I drew the coordinates there. It's some phase space path, a trajectory in phase space, and that's the point that we're at right now. The first point is that for a simple harmonic motion, it has to go clockwise, right? Imagine that it was going this way. This would be what would happen to X. X is getting smaller, but the velocity is positive. So right there, it can't be true. Also, this would have a velocity that's increasing because it's going in the upward direction, but it has a negative force. So it can't do that. It just can't do that. And you could pick any point on that path and show that it has to go clockwise. So it's got to go this way. Okay, here's another important point. It can't cross its trajectory. Okay, imagine there was some strange path for this posi particular position, for this particular system. If it crosses path, I should have drawn a picture, but imagine it crosses path, and so now it goes, should it go to the left or should it go to the right? But it it's already knows which way it has to go. It can't have a decision to make. The only way you could have something cross its path is if you have a some a time dependent force uh, or potential in there, so that the spring constant changes with time or something like that. So at, at later when it crosses path at a later time, it have a different set of conditions. Okay. What if you change the value of k, the spring constant? So here are three different spring constants. Uh, the green one has a it is a larger spring constant because it's going to go faster, right? So the, the vertical change is a measure of the maximum speed. And these all start at the same energy, so they all have to end up at the same amplitude, so they all have the same uh, horizontal position. You could change that too. Okay. Okay, oh, here's the different energy. So here's one energy. As I increase the energy, it looks like this, right? Because it has a larger amplitude and it goes faster and it goes further away. If I have a smaller energy, it looks like that. Okay, let's look at the damped harmonic oscillator. So here's the harmonic oscillator with that one force. I can add in a drag force. So a drag force, um, imagine the, the mass is moving through some oil. So the faster it goes, the greater that force acting on that in the opposite direction of the velocity. So we have this negative b x dot term in there. How do we solve this situation? I have a video on this, of course. So there's my uh, differential equation from Newton's second law, just dividing both sides by the mass, and I get that. Now, we do want to make some substitutions here. So I'm going to say omega naught is square root of k over m. That makes that nice. And I'm going to say beta is b over 2m. Why 2? Uh, it has to do with the quadratic quadratic equation and simplifying. You don't have to do that, but you should because it's going to make your life a lot easier. And then also we have this. Uh, so for an underdamped oscillator, uh, beta is going to be less than omega. And so you'd get a square root of a negative term. So we actually have this omega 1 is the, the square root of the difference and just to make it look better. Uh, and then we get this solution. And again, I'm not going to solve this. I've already solved this. Uh, but you get this e to the negative b beta t, a dampening term, and then you have cosine omega 1 t, omega 1 is not omega naught, plus v 0 omega z over 0, over omega 0, sine omega t, so that's your oscillating term, so you have a damped oscillation. Uh, now what if, then we call this underdamped, uh, we could look at other cases too, I'm just going to look at underdamped. So if I plot that as position versus time, I get this position versus time plot, and you can see that it decays down. I should have, I have a great video on uh, making this plot with the two uh, exponential curves lining it down, but that's not, it's in the playlist. If you want to watch that, if you, you should watch that. I think it's really good. Okay, but what if we make this as a phase space plot? Here's what that would look like. Uh, so it starts off as though it's a harmonic oscillator, but since it's decaying down to the position as that mass oscillates, it's eventually going to end up at x equals 0, v equals 0, which is the origin. So it's going to spiral into the origin. But, like I said, it cannot cross its path, right? Imagine that it crossed its path right here. Well, then which path would it take after that? It, it seems like both are valid points, and so you couldn't, you couldn't do that. And there are some cases where that might work, but for, for this case, it cannot cross its path. Okay, so that's um, the damped underdamped harmonic oscillator uh, as a phase space diagram uh, we can use this for other oscillations later but i wanted to introduce you to phase space diagrams so i hope hope you find that useful if you need to look at my other videos on oscillations uh like i said the playlist for this whole oscillation series is down below
That's that.